All right. I think we are ready. I think we're in good shape here. Here we go. Now, coming to you live from our top secret broadcasting bunker. Not only, not only can I read the Bible straight, I can fix most of my own technical problems. Uh, it's good to be with you today, Pastor Mike here, and I'm online and I am live. And uh, you see our email address at the uh, bottom of the screen here, Pastor Mike Online at gmail.com. I've got a couple things I want to start out with and some emails that came in. And um, by the way, in, I want to lay down the rules again for you in writing me emails. Uh, number one, don't send me your manifesto to the Pastor Mike Online at gmail.com email address to be read out loud uh, online because I won't read it. It's too long. I don't have time for it. Don't send me an entire website on this web address and, and want me to analyze it while we're online. I can't do that either. Don't send me a YouTube video to watch while we're online. I've already, I've, I, I do that before the program, so don't send that either. Don't try to set me up with some doctrine issue that you have. Don't try to set people, somebody did that last week and somebody, people have done that before, uh, have tried to set me up uh, online, okay, live with a setup question. And I, I recognize it. I recognize setup, I'm, I'm getting smarter at this. Uh, I recognize setup questions. And what I mean by that is that somebody will out there, will have some strange fishy doctrine that disagrees with the doctrines of the scripture. That's what I believe. And uh, they'll always try to set me up with it. Why do you do this? Or why do you? And, and so I'm just asking you, don't do that. That's rude. Okay? I believe what I believe. And if, and if God wants to change what I believe, he'll change what I believe according to the scriptures. And um, I don't need to be set up for it. And uh, if, you, if you disagree with something I say, and I've had this before, and I love you people. There's people watching right now that, um, and, and I love them dearly. Never met them. I love them dearly. They had, they had an issue with something that I preached one Sunday morning, and they wrote me a very nice email. And they said, Pastor Mike, would you please reconsider your position on this? I love that. I absolutely love that. Uh, but don't try to set me up. And then I'm going through, um, I've got uh, Kathy Burns, uh, the Masonic and Occult Symbols Illustrated. And I'm going through the, um, the chapter on hand signals. And uh, I'm looking at her book, and, and it's an, she's done an out, outstanding job here in this book. <clears throat> and I'm going through hand signals. Um, let me show you what I found this one, okay? Um, of course, we used to do that one with little kids. We'd take these two fingers like that and pinch their nose and then make our thumb look like we had their nose and say, got your nose, okay? But apparently that's, that's used in Wicca. Uh, then there's this one, you know this one, and then the, with the thumb in, there's that one there. Um, there's this one, which according to Kathy Burns is the moon sign in Wicca. Uh, of course, we have this one. You all know that one. And uh, let's see, she's got a picture of the Buddha doing, doing this. I don't know, okay, anyway, I don't know what that is. Uh, let's see here, and I'm doing this for a reason. There's, there's this one, and then there's this one. Uh, let's see here, what else does she have in there? And then, you know, Spock, Live Long and Prosper, that's in there. Gene Roddenberry was a Mason. Masonic Handshakes. I don't see, I don't see... Um, what I'm doing wrong, uh, let me read uh, the email here. This is from who sent it. Ah, here we go. This came in uh, Sunday. It says, I am concerned about the position of your hands in the caricature of you when this live broadcast begins. Can you explain, please? Seems that you would never let anything like this become questionable with you. Now, here's what she's, uh, here's what she's referring to. Okay, um, so let me, I've done this before, let me, um, let me uh, go back over this again here. I'm going to, I'm going to, you look at the, the hands there, and I'm going to try to do um, exactly what's in the picture here. Hang on a second. Uh, here we go. Okay, I don't know of any, I, I looked in the book, and I didn't see this in there, okay, 
I didn't, I didn't see that in there. And so it's just to caricature people. Um, it's not meant to convey a secret private message to my Illuminati brethren that are standing on the other side of this wall here monitoring what I'm doing. Okay, I promise you that. I promise you I am not now nor have I ever been linked in with the Illuminati, um, the uh, secret societies, the Roman Catholic Church, or any such thing. However, I do believe that there are some people that are. Let me... Um, let me go to a couple websites here that I had pulled up already, and uh, good to have you with us today. Let's see, what did I want to deal with first? Oh, this story's been making rounds about, uh, you know, this new Bible translation that came out from uh, the Wycliffe Bible translators that was being published uh, to uh, some areas of the world where it's known to have a... Um, uh, a lot of a lot of I'm I'm cracking up here. Somebody on Skype just wrote in and said, "If thy hand offend thee, cut it off." Only joking. It's, uh, I'm not ready to do that one yet. Uh, but anyway, this uh, this Bible translation that uh, the Wycliffe Bible translators et al, which means and others, uh, put out there in some of these Muslim countries that eliminated the uh, the terms of uh, like God and God the Father and the Son of God. And uh, and things like that, and a lot of uproar. Even people, even people who favored all these different translations, they looked at this one and they're going, "That is not right." And so uh, here is the retaliation of that. Here is the um, what website is this from? MyWordLikeFire.wordpress.com. Presbyterian Church of Pakistan says no to Wycliffe Bible mistranslation. Uh, the following is from shepherdsheartbiblestudy.com, uh, which you can link to at the end of this last paragraph. Reverend Altif Khan notes the Presbyterian Church of Pakistan has firmly rejected the Wycliffe debibilizing attempt. Um, here's what it says. In a very eye-opening official press release from the Presbyterian Church of Pakistan, Reverend Dr. Altif Khan says no to the Wycliffe Bible translations. He says, I, Dr. Altif Khan, the acting moderator, moderator of Presbyterian Church of Pakistan, would like to bring your attention to recent translation issues brought by Summer Institute of Linguistics or Wycliffe Bible translators. The controversy arose when the idea of contextualization was first floated by SIL. In the name of contextualization, SIL intended to remove father or son from the future translated version, citing that some local Muslims can only see sexual connotations to these terms. PCP and its General Assembly held in November 2011 um, an executive meeting and multiple gatherings in different cities where Christian leaders from all denominations participated has publicly condemned such justifications for the sake of a convenient translation. In this regard, PCB board members unanimously passed the following submissions, and then they go on to enumerate what they did. You know, basically what they're saying is, you're offering that to us? No thanks. We don't want it. We want a Bible. Listen to this now. We want a Bible that actually tells the truth about who God is. And if one billion Muslims on this world can't handle that, then stinks to be them. We can't change the Word of God to fit everybody's context. That's what's being done in the Muslim world by Wycliffe translators. That's what's being done in the, uh, in the American English world with the NIV, the New American Standard, the Message Bible, or whatever, whatever Bible du jour is coming out there, they're contextualizing the Scriptures, which basically means they're trying to make it fit into the context of our lives so that it's real and that we can relate to it and, and all of this other jive talk that they give to, to, to justify what it is they're doing with the Scriptures. And so Pakistan, the churches in Pakistan said, forget it. Don't bother uh, we don't want your nasty, stinking Bible. Uh, we'll just keep the one that actually calls God the Father and Jesus the Son. That's what we'll do. And you know what? I wish some American churches would stand up to Zondervan, stand up to Thomas Nelson, stand up to these... You know what? I just did it. I just made a hand gesture. Stand up to all these other groups that, that publish these stupid Bibles and say, we don't want it. We absolutely don't want it. But I think, I think I know what's happened. I think that behind the scenes, I think the Bible publishers got in with the big wigs and the denominations. And they said, uh, hey, uh, here, here's what we'll do, see. 
what we'll do is if you will publish our Bible translations in your literature, then we'll, uh, we'll give some of the proceeds of the profits from selling Bibles to your people. We'll put that in your denominational coffers, and you'll have that money. Think about what Ahab offered to uh, Naboth. He said, sell me your vineyard. Naboth said, I can't sell it. Ahab said, well, wait, 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 wait. Here's the deal, Naboth. Here's what we'll do is that I'll give you a better vineyard than the one you have. Okay? That's what they're saying. They're saying, really, the NIV is a better translation than the King James. Or he said, and you know what? I'll give you money. <laughs> money is what you want. And Nabal said, you know what? I, I'm, I'm sorry. My hands are tied. It's against the law. I cannot sell my vineyard. Case closed. Along comes Jezebel. You know Jezebel, don't you? She looks like, uh, Jezebel looks like this. Okay? That's who Jezebel looks like. That's Mystery Babylon the Great. Uh, and you know what? Let me uh, take a look at that. Take a look at that picture because I'm going to deal with it here in a little bit. Uh, I want you to note that she is dressed in scarlet. And we will talk about her shortly. What else did I have pulled up here? So anyway, Pakistan says, uh, uh, keep your Bible. We don't want it. Um, naturalnews.com is reporting. Genetically modified mosquitoes may soon be released in Florida. Haven't they seen this movie? I have. I've seen this movie. It's been out in about 10 or 15 different versions of this movie where the evil scientist, or no, the good-natured scientists in the lab coats, they genetically modify something, and it gets loose, and it never turns out good. Never. It never turns out good. So for some reason, some reason, the scientists think that if we genetically, if we genetically modify the corn, if we genetically modify the soybeans, if we genetically modify the wheat, if we genetically modify the pigs, the cows, the chickens, the goats, if we genetically modify the mosquitoes, and, and oh, you know, while we're at it, let's genetically modify human beings as well. They, for some reason, think that that's going to turn out good. That's going to be to the betterment of mankind. And I'm telling you that if there have been 15 movies made about something being altered or genetically modified, it always stinks to be a human being after that. Okay? Uh, think of, uh, somebody wrote this on Skype, think of the, the movie The Fly. You remember The Fly? Uh, the, not the old version with, um, oh, who was that? He's from St. Louis. Um, can't think of his name. He was in all these, he was in the thriller video. He did the... Narration for that. Somebody help me out here. I can't think of his name. Anyway, the old version of the fly. Uh, then we have the new version with uh, Jeff. Jeff something another. I've gone blank today. Uh, but anyway, he's he's modified his genetics. Now he's part human, and part fly. And then the movie uh, Vincent Price. That's who I was trying to think of. Thanks, Ariel. Um, who was a Satan worshiper, by the way? Um, anyway, genetically modified stuff being loosed out onto the world is not going to make a better world for everybody around. Uh, Terry and Michelle, she sent me this, and um, she said, Pastor Mike, this is in my hometown, um, or close by the Houston, Texas area. The article says, and get ready for this one, Christian, now I'm going to put that in quotations, Christian pole dancing class creating controversy. Why? Old Town Spring, Texas, women in the Houston area are pole dancing once a month for Jesus can anybody say